My family and my ancestors have lived here for as long as anyone can remember. You see, we're an old tribe. I reckon we've been here since the beginning of time, ever since Bunjil created the nations. From the nations he created countries, and from the countries he created people. And when I'm down here, I feel as if I'm in my home country and I have nothing to worry about. When I was little, I didn't know a lot about my culture. All I knew was I was the only Aboriginal fella in my school, except for my sister. But she had blonde hair and blue eyes, so she didn't get picked on quite as much as I did. I didn't like it because of all the teasing and because, well, I just felt different to everyone else. I didn't want to sit in a classroom. I wanted to be out exploring the world to see what was out there. So, as soon as I could, I did. When I left school, I went off travelling around Australia, just wandering around, up the top end, until I got a phone call from a mum telling me that there was this new university course going down in Gippsland and, well, it was all about Aboriginal studies. I thought, what the heck? I'm not doing anything with myself at the moment, so I came back down and that's where I finally got to meet people who thought and felt the same as me. When I was 24, I got this job representing my people. And that's when I first got to go into the vault at the museum in the city. The curator, an Aboriginal fellow who was there at the time, well, he took me into this room and showed me what was hidden away about my people's past. It was a room filled with cupboards and shelves overflowing with bones. One shelf was just covered in skulls. Another cupboard was filled with arms, another with legs. There were hand bones, fingers and feet, all stacked up high, each with a little tag that had a serial number on it. And I thought to myself, how can our people be sitting in these cupboards? They should be back where they belong. You might think it was murders or something suspicious, but mainly they'd been dug up during construction work, through road building or digging in pipelines. And well, when human remains pops up, first the police get involved, everyone gets interviewed and finally anthropologists at the museum get involved in trying to work out who they are and how they got there. When it was decided they were Aboriginal remains, they didn't rebury them, they just put them into this little dark room hidden away in the basement of the museum. For three days straight I sat in that room covered in goosebumps, sorting through the remains, reading the tags trying to make sense of what I was seeing. Some of the remains were from as far back as 1886. Some were unprovidenced, which means that they don't know where they're from, while others, like the ones dug on Explosives Reserve, well, we knew exactly where they came from, and they were the ones that I worked with. I believe that you shouldn't touch any sacred sites, especially bones, without being well prepared. So I covered my arms in white ochre, before I touched them, protecting myself from any spirits that may come with the remains. Then I had to organise them all, package them in foil paper, box them and take them to be reburied back where they'd come from. There were three sets of remains marked Altona. Two of them had no description on them, just a serial number, but one came with a phone number. I knew it was a long shot. I mean, the remains had been in the vault for more than 40 years, but I rung the number anyway. And that old fella, well, he still lived in Altona, and he used to work at the Explosives Reserve. He reckoned that one day he'd been digging up shell grit on the edge of the creek, and he dug up these remains as well. He took me to the reserve and showed me exactly where they'd come from. Aboriginal people are very spiritual. They believe a lot in the evil spirits and the good spirits. We believe that burning of the leaves, creating a lot of smoke, detracts the evil spirits from following you home. So when it came time to rebury them, I lit a fire, created a lot of smoke, smothered myself with the ochre, and then returned them to where they belong. People think that there haven't been Aboriginals in Altona for hundreds of years, but why would you think that? In a place so rich in resources, the ocean and creek meant that they'd be able to do a lot of fishing. Along the estuaries and sandy flats, they'd be able to get shell food, all that swamp area meant that they would have been able to catch a lot of birds and eggs. With that much food around, this would have been a well populated area. You see, we believe that if the land is utilised properly, it can be your supermarket, your chemist, your furniture factory, 
Everything you need to survive can be found down here. Aboriginal people followed the seasons. Following the food, places such as Altona would have provided a year-round supply. All they'd need to do would be to light a good fire, cook it all up using the bones as their utensils. A bit like you white fellas, when you see nice parkland, what do you want to do? Get together with friends and have a barbie or a picnic. I can't tell you exactly where I buried my people, but you might like to tread a little bit more carefully if you're ever digging around in your yard because usually with Aboriginal burials, there's a few buried together. But it's like my Nana said to me, when I was a kid, you put back into the earth what you can take out of it. This is your land, this is your country, and from your country, Bunjil created people.